because one week from today, this place will be wild. NASCAR will crown its Daytona 500 champion right here on Fox. Welcome to Daytona, Florida and Fox Racing. We've been here all week for Speed Week, and if you're joining us for the first time here in for a treat today, promises to be a truly exciting day of racing between the very best in NASCAR. They Live on Fox from Daytona International Speedway, the Budweiser Shootout. That's a packed grandstand, and these folks are waiting to see some action, and after practice the last couple days, they're not going to be denied. These 18 drivers are ready to go at it, and go at it hard. There's a 19th car kind of in the field. It's our Fox car. <laughs> you folks are the sponsors. I'm the owner. Got a great crew chief. I got a way overpaid driver. <laughs> Darrell, how are you going to win us this race? Okay, the, the crew chief's put me in the car. He knows I'm a little antsy, a little nervous. This is our first race out, and he looks at me, and he says, Hey, DW, don't forget, we don't have to race this car in the 500. Do what? Use it up if you have to. So now you got a crew chief saying, use it up if you have to. A driver says, yeah, but this doesn't even count. So you go into this race with very mixed emotions, and you just have to see what happens. Larry? I, by the way, Larry, when am I going to pit? Well, I'll let you know on that. I've been thinking about that ever since I saw the entry blank. But what about the pit crew? They're the guys that's going to make that two-tire stop. I've been telling people for years, they're athletes. They've been lifting weights all winter. They've been practicing in 20-degree weather. And they know one mistake on that pit stop could make the difference in going to victory lane or talking about we should or we could have. We're about to find out. Let's go to the president of Daytona International Speedway and our gracious host during Speed Weeks here in Daytona, John Graham. And now for the starting command, the Grand Marshal of the 2001 Budweiser Shootout at Daytona, Mr. Peter Boudreaux. Gentlemen, start your engines! Time for talk is over. It's time to walk the walk at 190 miles an hour, 18 cars strong. Dick Bergeron. Well, interesting strategy. If you talk to crew chiefs, you get all kinds of incredible stories here, Mike. I think Robin Pemberton said it yes when he's yet yeah, best when he said, we're gonna make this thing up as we go along. To Steve Burns. Well, Dick, you're absolutely right. One crew chief said we're going to come in on lap 15 because we can make it the rest of the way on gas. Another crew chief said, nah, we're going to wait till halfway. That's all we can do. Robbie Loomis said, we ain't telling you. Let's go to Matt Yoakum. Steve, I pulled a number of crew chiefs, three quarters of the field. They all say they will pit when the leaders pit because they don't want to get hung out with cars they don't want to draft with to Genie. Well, I'm hearing the same story here, and the general belief at Joe Gibbs Racing is that it's going to take more than their two cars to get something done. So honestly, Jimmy Maycar has been working the garage trying to see if he can get some of the other drivers to all agree to pit at the same time. Mike? Thanks, Jeannie. Here is the starting lineup for the Budweiser shootout. They drew for starting positions earlier this week, and Ken Schrader, the 1988 and 89 winner, pulled the pole. Dale Earnhardt, who's won six of the 11 shootouts he's been in, starts alongside. Defending champion of the race is Dale Jarrett. He and Mark Martin share row number two. Martin, the 99 winner. Steve Park won two poles last year. He and Jeff Gordon, who won this race as a rookie and again three years later in row three. Tony Stewart last year ran fourth in his first shootout appearance. Bobby Labonte, third in this race in 99. Front row, Joe Nemechek won the Talladega pole to make his third shootout. Dale Earnhardt Jr. won a pole at Charlotte and Michigan. He's a rookie in this race. Ricky Rudd, 12 previous appearances. And Terry Labonte, the 85 winner. Bill Elliott, the only Dodge in the field, the 87 shootout winner. He won the 500 a week later, as you've heard. And Jeremy Mayfield finished fifth in this race last year. The 1998 shootout champion, Rusty Wallace, and Jeff Burton making his second appearance in the pole winner's race. Ted Musgrave won the draw as one of the second round fastest qualifiers to represent them in this field. And Mike Skinner in the shootout for the fourth straight year. That is your 18 car field as they begin to form up behind the pace car. 
The Budweiser Shootout at Daytona live on Fox, and it's coming at you right after this. Welcome back live at Daytona. You're watching Fox Racing, and next Saturday, the Napa 300 at 12.30 Eastern, and then NASCAR Happy Hour, don't drink and drive, 3.30 Eastern on FX. And then, of course, a week from today, the Great American Race starts at 11.30 Eastern. Be with us early to get ready for the Daytona 500. And we welcome back Jeff Hammett and Ken Squire as we get ready for the Budweiser Shootout. The winner gets $200,000. You were a crew chief for at least 10 of these races. Who do you like in this one and why? Believe it or not, Chris, I went through the garage area this morning, and what I'm seeing and what I'm hearing, believe it or not, I'm going to go with Ricky Rudd. I know that sounds kind of strange because everybody believes Earnhardt's going to do it again, but the guys on that crew are very confident, and they said Ricky says this is the best Budweiser shootout car he's ever had. Ken? Oh, Rudd last year had one of the best, and he ended up upside down up turn four. I want to go with Awesome Bill from Dawsonville. I think he's going to be really tough out here. Mark Martin making his 12th uh, consecutive Bud Shootout start. That is a uh, record as you get a look at Dodge and Bill Elliott. Again, the first Dodge to appear in the Budweiser Shootout ever. Let's go back upstairs. Mike Joy, Darrell Waltrip, and Larry McGrath. Well, I think uh, the Earnhardts are going to be tough to beat because, as in horse racing, it's an entry. If you pick Earnhardt, you're getting two cars, father and son. Plus a teammate. Steve Park. Steve Park. Larry? Uh, trying to pick the winner of this race is like trying to pick what the weather's going to be like in nine months, and it always has been. You always have an underdog that shines. I think, though, if you look at history, you got to look at Earnhardt Sr. you got to look at Jarrett. you got to look at Gordon. But I like those Gibbs teammates, Bobby Labonte and Tony Stewart. All right. We're a lap and a half away from finding out. In the Budweiser shootout of 2001, you are watching NASCAR on Fox. The Budweiser Shootout on Fox is brought to you by Budweiser with the crisp, clean, refreshing taste you'll find in no other beer. This Bud's for you. By Dodge and nearly 3,000 dealers who invite you to come see what's different. By UPS, moving at the speed of business. And by new Haviland Motor Oil Technology, formulated for improved gas mileage. Add more light to your car. You're riding with Ricky Rudd our group's pick to perhaps win this race. <laughs> now, I had a Quinella with the Earnhardts. Gerald's got one, too. Yeah, somebody named Jeff will win this race. There's a couple of those. Light is out atop the safety car. That means next time by, we are going green. Caution laps do count. Each car must make a mandatory pit stop under the green flag and change at least the two right side tires. And this race cannot end under caution. No, it can't. Right now, everybody's, you know, everybody's tense. The tension is really high because you're coming around for your first green flag of the 2001 season. And down here, differently than any place else, it's a lot about what will happen in the inspection room over there before they put these cars on the line. You know, the thing I see, we've got 18 cars. We've got seven sets of teammates out there and four single car teams. And you would think they would hook up with their teammate, but what we've seen in practice, You'll be lucky if you see your teammate the entire 70 laps. <laughs> yeah, there just is no deals. You can This is racing, man. We don't we don't make this stuff up. It's, it, it happens as it happens. Whatever unfolds, unfolds. You're going to go with the guy that gives you the best chance to get to the front or to win the race. Don't matter who he is. Look at that grandstand. It's packed because they know they're about to see something wild unfold. Um, Kenny Schrader leads them down. Green flag. Ted Musgrave goes to pit road rather than coming down for turn one with the field. We're racing. stuck in the middle. They're going by the high. They're going by the low side. He's pretty much going to end up about 17th before this is over. And just remember, that's what can happen to you when you start up front. You can end up in last place in one lap. Even if there were 40 cars out there, they'd be going by that much faster. Now they're doing it to Jarrett. He's kind of like a hot dog getting squeezed right through that bun, right to the back if he can't get back in line. 
looking inside of Ricky Rudd's car, and it looks like a nice, calm ride, but trust me, folks, there's a storm going on out there outside of that car. If you listen, even through the corner, the RPMs almost never change. They may lose about 100 RPMs in the corner because they're flat on the mat all the way around this place, and they will be for 70 laps. That's what the crew chief always asks. How much are you losing in the turns? I say, if you want to know that, you get in here and watch the gauge. I ain't got time. Jarrett went back to 14th place before he got in line. Now it's Steve Park, who went from 5th to 1st in car number 1. Now he's getting the squeeze. Three wide there. They can do that early on. They got fresh tires. Everybody's cars handling really well right at this point. Boy, Park swung out and almost up into Schrader. Those subtle moves turned out to be, you know, they'll turn out to be very violent when they happen up in the traffic like that. In for a second stop, the Jenny Donlevy car, number 90. He seems to have a vibration. He keeps coming in and changing tires. Here's Jarrett storming back toward the front. Not much luck there. Mayfield there with Bobby Labonte. Darrell. You said a minute ago that, hey, if crew chief wanted to know something, to get in with you. Remember that one time down Talladega you told me that, and I got in with you? Yeah, and we went 210 miles an hour. And that's when I knew that you were not all right. You were a sick little man. <laughs> hey, working for you kind of rubbed off. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he rode with you at Talladega? At Talladega. They had all oh. these gauges in the car, and they wanted to know what they I said, I can't look at all those gauges. So he got back in the back seat and rode. And I had to go fast to make it all work. Of course, folks, there is no back seat. There's just a bunch of tin work and roll bars back there. Saw a little steam come up out, a little puff of water come up out of one of those cars on the outside there. They go to run these cars just a little differently, and they might run them in the 500. They got them taped up. They're going to run them just about like they qualified. Earnhardt loses the lead to Mark Martin. Jeff Gordon on the low side with Martin and Bobby Labonte. Mayfield. Ho, oh ho. He just wanted him to know he was there. It's just a little friendly tap. Jeff Gordon came from second on the inside to the lead. He's bringing Labonte and Mayfield with him. And the Earnhardts are hooked up on the outside. Gordon dropped down to get a Labonte to help him come up behind him so they could pass Earnhardt. Earnhardt is really hard to pass when he gets in front. They want to shake him out of the draft if they can, get him back in the field. You're riding with Mark Martin. Coming right up the middle. so far gordon just slid Listen, up the racetrack a little to hold him look at that three by three by three by three and they'll all tell you you can't do that they'll all stand on the sideline say you can't run three wide here so tony stewart get just a little bit loose there but he's the one that's pushing mark martin up there and mark may have been struggling in qualifying mode here but he's done what he does best he's got that car driving good and racing good and the guys on the inside the guys down here and the guys out here they're pretty those guys in the middle, they could let off the throttle and they can't get out of that spot. They are hung up in there and can't get out. Folks, you got to remember, they are doing 190 miles an hour closer together than you park at the shopping mall. There's a lot of hand signaling going on right now. I can tell you that. Everybody's saying, come on, get behind me. No, get behind me. They're moving all over the place. You're just trying to find some place where you can move. Jeff Gordon at the point has had the two Earnharts right behind him, but Bobby Labonte brings his teammate, Tony Stewart, and that orange number 20 right up to the front on the inside. Let me tell you, Dale Earnhardt has no intention of running any further back than he is right now. He knows if he can stay up in the front, he can win this race. He gets back in the pack, he gets beat up, get pushed around, he don't have a chance. How about Schrader? 
in 36, started on the pole, got kicked to the total back of the field. How did he get back to third? Well, How did the, any of them get back up? You heard Jeff Gordon say, and that's what this new aero package will do. You can go to the front, you get out front, then you go to the back, then you go back to the front. It's all about, it's a chess game, and you try, try to figure out, how am I going to end up in the front on lap number 69? Schrader has won this race twice, but not in the past 11 years. Earnhardt is wearing the rear bumper paint off of that 24 car. Oh, they're drafting all right, Larry. They're bump drafting, baby. And you can do that down the straightaway, but, you know, you don't want to try that in the turns. You don't want to be in y'all or turn. No, uh -uh. You don't want to have that wheel turn one way or another and get bumped. Earnhardt Jr. has stayed uh, right in Dad's shadow, right up close there on the outside in second and third in the outside lane. Overall position for meaningless because it's two by two all the way back through. Well, the guy sitting in the back to take uh, Jared, Bill Elliott, doesn't come as a surprise to me that they'd be back there kind of watching all this. Mark Martin got way up high coming off turn two. That will increase. That, those cars will continue to push up, 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 up more and more. It's all, all arrow. You don't get the good grip after you run a while off of the corners. Here go the Earnhardts. This is, a, this is everybody else's worst nightmare. These two guys get hooked up out front. I'm telling you, it's going to be trouble. Now, is, Man, is Gordon is Dale Sr., is, is, is he going to leave Son hung out to dry there? If he gets a chance, do you think he'll drive down in front of Jeff Gordon or will he stay right there, Darrell? Right now, he'll work with his son. <laughs> I, I wouldn't count on that all day, though. <laughs> now, Gordon's closest teammate is Terry Labonte, who is well back on the outside lane, fourth in line. Terry Labonte will lay back there at the back, watch all this action. Very conservative driver, takes his time, patient. When it comes time to go, he'll be up there. There are the Gibbs cars, 18 and 20, Labonte and Stewart. Now, Earnhardt and his son are technically not teammates. Richard Childress owns the number three, but Earnhardt owns his son car, and the blood you is thicker so. than mine. I was going to say, you'd think it'd be a little thicker than whether they're teammates or not. Oh, goodbye, Gordon. He's, the He's in, the in the middle. He's in the middle. See you in the rear, Jeff. He will go the rear just because he wants to when he gets caught in the middle lane. Ten laps complete, 60 to go in the Budweiser shootout. Earnhardt, Labonte, Earnhardt, Gordon, and Stewart on Fox. Welcome back to Daytona, where Bobby Labonte leaves the Budweiser shootout, but only by inches and not anymore. Earnhardt Jr. is going to take over the front spot, uh, leaving his dad in the high lane. He can get a, he can get alongside, but buddy, it takes a whole lot of horsepower down that back chute to pass. That's a pretty pretty strong top line to be trying to get by right there. Those oh, yeah. guys are lined up in that high line, and I know it depends. Here's Earnhardt moving to the inside of Bobby Labonte. He'll do that just as Labonte moved down to pick up teammate Tony Stewart a lap ago. Earnhardt Sr. moves down and up right across the bow of Labonte. That right there is oh. absolutely breathtaking. I trust, trust me when I tell you that. And, and you're we, on that radio. You're on that radio, Bobby Labonte. You say, did you see that? And I'm sure he went there before the spotter even thought about saying Oh, yeah. He, he, need we explain why they call Earnhardt the Intimidator? I don't think so. Boy, Rudd's windshield looks like he's got oil all over his something. He doesn't have a very good view there. It wouldn't surprise me if somebody had blowing out a little fluid of some kind, because like I said, they run these things taped up. Terry Labonte also says he's having trouble seeing. Steve? And we also heard Dale Jarrett said that his windshield is full of grease. He thinks it's coming off the 36 of Kenny Schrader. Let's go to Matt. And Steve, the one car is also complaining about a dirty windshield. But Dale Earnhardt can pretty much go where he wants to. He found that out in practice. He can pull out and pass at will. So right now he's just riding. He has not said one word on the radio since they dropped the green. Jeff? Guys, one of the things I was over at the gift shop not too long ago talking to some of the crew members, the 18 car that Bobby's in right now is not one of his favorite cars. As a matter of fact, it's his least favorite car. The car has got really good drag numbers, but Bobby hates the way it drives. But right now it looks like it's an awful good ride for him. Labonte in a green car, second behind Earnhardt. Uh, you see the worried look on the crew chief on the side of Kenny Schrader's car. That's because he's just been informed they've gotten the black flag from NASCAR leaking oil. Schrader will have to pit and see if they can plug that leak 
and get them back out. Now, the only good thing about these guys that have this dirty windshield is because of new technology, they really won't have to clean that windshield when they do make that pit stop. They got a tear off that they can yank off and they'll have like a new windshield again. So it'll keep them having to actually clean it because they're only going to be there for about six or seven seconds for those two tires when they do get them. But they're driving, I mean, it's like driving in, a, in the fog right now. They're just kind of seeing things ahead of them. If anything should happen, that's when you can have a problem. We started with 18 cars, and now 11 of them have broken out front. Bill Elliott trying to work his way up and along. He is the last of that 11-car breakout and the only Dodge in the field. And he's riding, he, he's running a Bill Elliott race. He's right where I think Bill would always be. He's watching this thing, and if that thing will go, we won't know it until it counts. Jeannie? Well, Jeff was just talking about the fact that this is a car that Bobby Labonte does not like, and he's exactly right. He doesn't like it because this is the car that he wrecked at last year's Bud Shootout. But honestly, here with the Gibbs team, they are pretty excited seeing how this car is performing, and they actually have another car they're going to use for the 500 that they call Old Faithful, but they're feeling pretty good about this one right now, guys. They're straighter in the pit. They will change two tires and try to uh, clean things up. This will count as it's pit stop. There's the oil leak up on the back. Matt? Kenny Schrader came out, Mike. He said he doesn't think they're really leaking anything. They are ch changing four tires and inspecting the car. The inspector says he really doesn't see much. And Kenny's down and away. Well, that will count as his green flag pit stop. He'll lose a lap to the field. And look at the 88 car, the white car there coming into the picture. It wasn't just a couple laps ago. He was probably 20 car lengths behind this group. But because of the new aero package, the one-inch restrictor plate, the roof bin, by himself, those guys dicing up there, he has caught that pack and become part of the lead pack again. This is a typical run for most of these guys. You'd expect Jared, Elliott, uh, Mark Martin. Those are guys that don't really enjoy getting in there and mixing it up. And I think they're sitting there waiting for things to maybe get single file and get a little more sanitary up in front of them before you see what they really got. All right, now, crew chief, is it too early to start making deals up and down pit road about who you want to pit with and, and when? Because nobody wants to pit alone and not have a drafting partner. No, you've got to have a drafting partner. And you need at least about three or four cars to be in that. And we're to lap 19, so we're in that window. So I'm sure if we look down at the pits, you'll see crew chiefs, you'll see car owners, you'll see tire men, everybody running up down. When you gonna pit? When you gonna pit? Let's go to Earnhardt Jr.'s pit and Dick. And Tony Gurry Sr. is Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s crew chief. Is there any plan for father and son to work together? Is there any plan at all? Uh, race like this, I don't believe you can make a plan because nobody's going to stick to it. So uh, <laughs> we just decided to go out there and do the best we can do. And whoever we can run with the best, that's the one we're going to run with. And right now, it looks like Tony Stewart, the pony actually looks like they run pretty good with that Bowiser Chevy. So maybe we might better hang in there with that Gibbs bunch. How soon do you pit? I don't know. There's probably going to be a bunch of strategy going on here. We're listening to a couple other people. And, uh, there's four or five of them back there the right rear tires are already given up on. So I guarantee you it ain't going to be too long. Oh, your car is in the lead, Tony. Good luck. And one of those cars might be Earnhardt Seniors. He's just drifted back to fourth place. Yeah, that, uh, let me tell you about Earnhardt's car. I have watched him race this car time and time again. When he's out front, you can't pass him. But he does not like to get back in traffic. I don't know if he runs the car loose. I don't know if the car's that free. I'm not sure what it is. But he doesn't like to be back in the traffic. He doesn't want to mix it up as much as he loves to mix it up. Nine lead changes already. That's a new shootout record. The previous record, eight in a year when Dale Earnhardt passed D.W. on the final lap. So, more lead <laughs> That's Dale Earnhardt broke. Jr. leads Tony Stewart as you watch the Budweiser shootout and NASCAR on Fox. Welcome back to Daytona where Dale Earnhardt Jr. leads Tony Stewart and Jeff Gordon. Earnhardt fourth and Mayfield fifth as you watch from the best seat in the house today on board the Budweiser.com airship. Ariel Ambassador, the King of Beers. Budweiser, official beer of NASCAR. The Budweiser shootout continues with 23 green flag laps. Kenny Schrader and the 90 of Ted Musgrave have made their pit stop. Jeff Hammond? Mike, Mike, one of the things here at Dave Tony, normally on a long run, cars start to pick up a push. Daryl and Larry both talked about that. Speaking with 
Jimmy Finnick earlier this morning in 35 laps, the Mark Martin car, his right side tires are totally worn out. The new downforce package is wearing the right sides a lot more than ever. If a car starts pushing, don't be surprised if you start seeing pit stops here in the next 10 laps. Yeah, that's definitely going to be the deciding factor, I think, on when they pit. You're going to run, as long as you can run your car wide open and stay on the bottom, then you're not going to be wanting to pit. But as soon as you start pushing up the hill and the car starts getting the old to drive, like Earnhardt I believe Earnhardt's in the pits. He's got with Gordon. With Gordon, 24 and 3 in the pits. Gordon just about slammed on the brakes and peeled off at the last second. It is Gordon, Earnhardt, Skinner all coming on to pit road and taking more cars with them. Nima Check, Terry Labonte, and Rusty Wallace are all pitting. Matt? The 24 car is a surprise pitting with the 3, but the 31 isn't. They had made a deal to pit with the 3, the 31, the 33, so you would have the three rad cars and the 36. Burns. Jeff Gordon took just right side tires, Matt. Right side tires, the 24. Labonte and Wallace finished their stops on the right side of your screen. Gordon momentarily stalled the motor, but he got her fired up and, and was away. He had a good stop. 25 laps complete, 26 this time by. Looks like Bill Elliott's going to hit pit road here one lap later. And he is now Lonesomeville from Dawsonville. No one pitted with him. Oh, this is the most antagonizing thing in the world. 55 miles an hour down pit road. Your pit seems like it's five miles away, and you're never going to get there. And the best news for him is everyone else is going to have to come on pit road sooner or later. Dick Bergeron? Well, Bill Elliott is on his way down pit road. Mike, he stops now all by himself. This is a surprise. Everybody wanted to pit with somebody else. Uh, Earnhardt. Guys are going to try to pit with five other cars. They got the right side tires on Elliott's car. It is going to be a two tire stop and a good one. 9.2 for Elliott. Well, Daytona is the lonely town when you're the only dog. Nobody yeah, yeah. went with them. You know, nobody lost a lap. So uh, it should shake out when it's all said and done, right back about where they were. Tony Stewart, now the leader. Dale Earnhardt Jr., Bobby Labonte in 18. That black car is Mark Martin, number six. Jeff Burton is up to fifth now. Ricky Rudd, sixth. Jeremy Mayfield, seventh. Dale Jarrett, eighth. This is the part of the race. Your single file. Not a lot going on right now. Right now, you're catching your breath. You're saying, whoo, man, I'm glad we finally got strung out here a little bit. You're kind of adjusting your mirror. You're looking at your belt. You're checking your gauges. You're going through your little rundown here, your little schedule checklist to be sure when it comes down to 10 to go that you're in good shape. Gordon and Earnhardt have hooked up together three quarters of a lap behind the leaders here they are and there's quite a gap back to the lead pack and i'm sure you won't see no racing out of the 24 and the three car they need to stay in line they need to keep making up as much ground as they can you look back about 15 car lengths behind them you see bill elliott then a little bit further back coming out of the trove you see mike skinner and here comes the cars that's leading the race but they still have to make that green flag stop mike skinner is the fellow who got left behind when all that group pitted Ooh, labonte climbs the hill down in turn one I like to be tires. Once they start doing that, I mean, you lose grip and you just start chasing it up that hill. Everyone back in line. Now Martin pulls to the inside to take advantage of Labonte. Larry, I might not have been able to make it to that 50 laps I wanted to run to. <laughs> You'd be wanting them tires twice. I think I'd probably be hollering right now. Who could have said 50 laps? Now, the only gamble on the cars that have not pitted yet, should we get a caution and they go back racing, they still got to make that green flag stop where your Gordon, your Earnhardt, your Elliott, your Skinner, they've already made there. So a little bit of gamble as these guys stay out there longer and longer. Larry, would you have brought our car in with them? I would have done been there. When I saw Gordon and Earnhardt hit pit road, I'd find me one car and I'd be on pit road. Jeff Hammond, how about you? Would you have pitted with them? <laughs> I'd like to challenge him on that right there. I still believe that you're at Daytona. When a car starts getting a push, you can't drive it. Pressure tires at the end. I think would be better. So I think some of these guys right now are staying out. They're going to be the cars to beat later on. So Jeff, as long as he could have stayed on the lead lap, would have stayed out on the racetrack. Well, Darryl. as long as I can keep my car on the bottom, as long as I can keep my car down low, it's not got that big push in it, I would stay on the racetrack as long as I could because those fresh tires are going to pay dividends at the end of the race. You ought to know that, Daryl. We won a race with fresh tires one time before, and you can already see as the deal's being made, When's everybody going to come? We're getting close to that 35 lap deal. The 18. Down to you, Dick. Let's see what's going on. Well, the guys from Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s pit have just made a big run up pit road. They've talked to Tony Stewart's crew, and they've decided they're going to pit together. Time uncertain, but they're going to pit together, Mike. 
Bobby Labonte and three other cars have made a deal to come in together. And one interesting thing I saw in that picture a while ago, that was Todd Parrott, Dale Jarrett's crew chief in the engine builder from the 18 car, and I saw him hold up four fingers, which means we're thinking about putting four tires on. Well, the longer they run, that, that's not a bad call. Listen, guys, handling. You hear these guys week in, week out, but at Daytona, handling is as critical as horsepower is in the race. But here, where you cover a football field a second, Larry, how much longer will it take to change four tires instead of two? Well, these guys are changing four tires in about 12 or 13 seconds. The key, yeah, the four tires will be good. If you could get three or four cars to do it with you, then you're definitely going to be better off. Oh, yeah. I think we're going to see somebody gonna see somebody take four tires. Jeremy Mayfield broke on the back straightaway. He is going to the garage. I'll tell you something else that's pretty interesting. The 24, the 3, and the 9, that pack behind them has not been able to close down on them. They've been maintaining about the same distance. Remember, Bill Elliott pitted all by himself. He raced up and popped that through. It wasn't many laps to go. As I, as I pointed out, he was about 10 car lengths back. He's done caught these guys, so he's he's stronger than he's been showing. Oh, I think he's about like he was qualifying. <laughs> yeah, first. <laughs> They're closing in on him, but uh, it's taking him a while. We're past halfway, 38 laps to go, as you see in the Fox box at the upper left of your screen. And again, we'll remind you, that across the top are numbers, positions, and driver names, and we have a second line underneath that ticker. In this case, it's showing you where those cars started. Steve? Well, Mike, Mike, Larry McReynolds was exactly right. The 88 and the 18 are going to pit together. I talked to Mark Cronquist, the engine tuner on that 18 car. He said they are, in fact, cutting a deal to come down pit road, and the 88's gonna have to do some work. You're a little bit loose. Let's Go to Judy's Alaska. Well, I'll tell you what, that deal is growing because we are told that the 18 car worked out a deal with up to four or five teams to all pit at the same time. Uh, Bobby Labonte will take four new tires. As a matter of fact, they're going to take the air pressure down on that right rear tire about a pound. Now, if Tony Stewart, Dale Jr., and Labonte lap the 24, the 3, and the 9, and a caution comes out, now Ooh. what? Then you got a different story. Now, now what kind of deal are you going to make? Closing in to perhaps lap Gordon, Earnhardt, and Elliott. Tony Stewart, your race leader, number 20. Matt? Mike, I spoke to Greg Zipadelli, Tony Stewart's crew chief. He said that, yes, a number of people have come into their pits trying to make deals. Basically, he says we're coming in between lap 40 and 55, and whoever else will come with us will. But right now, we have about five cars. The guy that pits last, that's the guy that wins. Sean Parker from Mark Martin's car just came down to Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s crew. He's trying to strike a deal. They want to come in together, but the question is, two tires or four? If you take two tires, you're out of here more quickly. Parker would like to take four. He's trying to persuade Earnhardt's guys to do the same thing so they can hook up after the pit stop and run as a group. The but only way you're going to know what to do, and if that's the right move or not, is they scan each other. They always bump drafting. He's giving a good push down the back. You got to listen to what all the other guys that took two are saying. If they're starting to scream already about, I got the pushback, I got the pushback, they're going to need those four tires to get to the finish. And that wouldn't be a bad call. I swear, I don't think it would be. This is sounding like a used car commercial. We're wheeling, we're dealing, everybody rides. Well, and come in and see us all together. That's what makes this, this is the best bud shootout I've ever seen, Herb. There's the motor man for Bobby Labonte. That's him in the green shirt. That's Todd Parrott, Dale Jarrett's crew chief. They're just trying to make sure that they're on sync with what lap they're going to do it because if they miss it by a lap with each other, they could get separated. Plus, not only that, but you're going to come off the turn four. You're going to be running wide open, and when you get ready to pit, you're going to dive down in that pit. You're going to be jamming gears, and the guy behind you better be on his toes. Why is that front three group of cars, which are still on the tires with which they started the race, faster than the drivers who stopped for fresh tires. Because they can run them wide open. Huh? They haven't picked up the push. Hey, Larry, is this not what crew chiefs just live for? This is a race where we can actually get involved and we have some direct input in trying to make the right decision. I mean, I don't know about you, but I know sitting on top of that box, I just love the opportunity to go and make the right decision at the right time.
get an opportunity to help win my, my driver win a race. Oh, in 20 years of being a crew chief, you know, I had a lot of lows, but some of the biggest highs I had besides winning races was making strategy calls, especially when they paid off. This right here is what you call high-speed chase. chase. Just past halfway in the Budweiser shootout of 2001. Some of the leaders have pitted, some have You watching NASCAR on Fox. Premiering tonight and every Sunday night, NASCAR Victory Lane on Fox Sports Net at 9 p.m. Your local time, they'll take you from pole position to the checkered flag every Sunday evening. In the Budweiser shootout, 39 laps complete. Tony Stewart, Dale Earnhardt Jr., Mark Martin, Bobby Labonte, and Jeff Burton are the front five. None of them have made their green flag pit stop yet. No, and, that, and those tires are starting to really uh, pay dividends for Earnhardt and Gordon. They're able to work their way back to the lead here, but they're a lap down, obviously. But uh, Tony Stewart, Jeff Gordon, uh, Dale Jr. and those guys, uh, Bobby Labonte, they're going to need tires pretty darn soon. You know, one thing that I've heard interesting, Daryl, you know, we do talk about a push here at Daytona, but I've heard two people talk about things that indicate their car's loose. You heard Tony Urey Jr., or Sr., talk about the right rear being wore out. That's indication the car's loose. The back end's coming around. You also heard about them taking air out of the right rear tire. That's normally something you do to tighten the car up if it's loose. Dick Bergeron has more. Well, we just heard on the radio that Earnhardt Jr. is going to pit on right around lap 45 and you're right it is the right rear tire that they've been holding up on they've been listening everybody's talking about right rears going away they wanted to make it last as long as they could to Jeannie. right rear tire the drama is well for bobby labani he's talking about pitting lap 46 that is the target right now he's having some problems in the corners it's tight in the center of the car really loose coming off he's trying to hold off again till 46. Steve? Well, Larry Mack, Dale Jarrett is one of those cars that's reporting loose. They're going to make an air pressure adjustment and move that track bar down. So, again, 88 is loose. Dale Jarrett, he's going to pit on lap 45. Matt Yoakum? Bush Hilton just came down from the 18 pit talking to Zippy, telling Zippy what their car is doing and what the plans they need, hoping that the 20 will go with them. Right now, it looks like all the cars with the numerals 8 are going to come together, except for the 20. So, look to be about five cars in that bunch. Yeah, Stewart may not need to come with that group because he's going to be way out in front of them when it comes time to pit. Tony's car is still working very, very well, while his teammate Labonte has dropped to the tail of the lead draft. Well, it's really hard to hold that car on the bottom like that now with that many laps. he got 42 laps on tires. Earnhardt's got about 20 laps on his right side, so uh, he's got his work cut out for him. That baby's working good for him right now. Musgrave has gone behind the wall, joining Jeremy Mayfield as the two cars out of the event thus far. 43 laps complete. 27 to go. Jeff Hammond. Mike, we keep talking all week about the poor performance of the Roush racing cars. Look, Mark Martins was in third place and keep in touch uh, Tony Stewart as well as Dale Earnhardt Jr. You never know. We get in and get a chance to make this quick pit stop. Mark Martin could be a force to reckon with before the end of the day. And Mike, I want to say, I want to try to explain about the right rear. The cars are pushing loose. You basically have the wheel turn hard left, and that makes the car go around the turn like you want it to, but the longer you run, the more you have to turn it to the left, to the point to where if you've ever driven on ice or snow, you get the wheels turned so far, then the back end wants to come around. The one car of Steve Park has lost touch with the draft, and he makes his pit stop. Now, this is lap 45 coming up. Let's see who peels off the turn four banking. Stewart continues to lead. Very impressive with 45 here he comes, on those here tires. Here he comes, here he comes, him and Junior. 
and they don't have to maintain 55 miles an hour they can come as hard as they want till they get to this line right there now they got to be running 55 miles an hour till they leave pit road this is a big big larry you know this is a big responsibility here Jeannie. well as expected here comes bobby labani the plan right now is to take him one pound down on that right rear the same problem everyone's having and one round down on the track bar and four tires matt a four-tire stop for Tony Stewart. They did adjust the car, which was he was tight. Let's just go to see. That, that four-tire change for Dale Jarrett, they did make that track bar adjustment. Right side tires on, left side tires on. We have a crewman down, crewman down. To 99, the engine stalled, and they were having to push it and fire it, and it took off. Yeah, it took off and left them left pushing them laying on the ground. They lost their footing. Now, actually, they didn't get hit. They just got, they were pushing the car when it fired, he took off. So that should be it for green flag pit stops. 25 laps to go. Uh, now, Larry, with them four tires and already having been leading the race. First, let's show you what happened on pit road, Darrell, to uh, Jeff Burton's crew. Yeah, they just... He, his car had not, it had stalled when he left. These guys was pushing the car. I saw him when he left the pits, and they had pushed it three or four pit stops before it finally fired. When it did fire, it's like they lost their momentum and started tumbling. You know, I tell you one thing, Tony Stewart is driving my favorite car right now. The one in front. It's one in front, it's got four fresh tires on it. You're riding with the leader, Mark Martin, who took on only two tires when many of the others took four. And he's got about a 20 car length lead, and that'd be great anywhere, DW, except, except Daytona. Daytona. Yeah, he's running about two seconds slower in that pack behind him. Well, that's the difference between two tires and four tires in the pit stop time, about half the length of the straightaway that Mark Martin currently leads by. But for how long? That is the question. 22 laps to go. In the Budweiser shootout of 2001, Mark Martin all alone out in front of that pack on Fox. The Budweiser shootout on Fox is brought to you by the 2001 Aztec from Pontiac, now offering Versatrack all-wheel drive. Welcome back to Daytona and the Budweiser shootout. 22 laps to go. Tony Stewart and Bobby Labonte with those four fresh tires have worked their way past Mark Martin and into the lead. Yeah, it didn't take them very long. I was catching by what, Larry? Second and something a lap. Second, two tenths in one lap. Yeah. Here's how it happened. There's just no substitute for tires here. <laughs> right down to the bottom of the racetrack. Yeah, and it doesn't hurt to have your teammate pushing you either. That's, a, that's another plus. You see the 99 running behind the six, and he's trying to help him. And they're going to be able to hang in there pretty well, I think. Uh, but I don't believe they'll be able to challenge those two tiny ones. You look at those lead four of the of the top four there, the only one that changed two tires was Mark Martin in the six car. Tony Stewart, Bobby Labonte, Dale Jarrett each changed four tires. Yeah, and Jarrett had a pretty slow stop. He got out late, but uh, he's certainly proven the, that the four tires were worth the time. Here comes Earnhardt Jr. hunting fourth place as he and Jarrett get side by side. Look at Jeff Burton right there on the outside. Despite having all those problems, oh. he moves down to the bottom. He's back up in there despite being on pit road a lot longer than anybody else. And that'll bring the rest of that pack right up to them. Got to remember something about that 99 car. Didn't he win this race here in July? Uh, the 400, not this yes. race, but he won here in July. And uh, that's a fast car. Look who's back in the picture there. The old man in black right there. Yeah. He and Jeff Gordon. Moving along. It's going to take, if he can pull this out with two tires, he is the man. <laughs> Rusty Wallace right with them. Every time I say that, he must, somebody must tell him, Walter said you can't do it. And he'll go right up there and do it just to spite me. And he told you yesterday, why don't you come ride with him? I wouldn't ride with him. I'd just soon get an electric chair. <laughs> the sensation would be the same, right? I didn't even like riding up in another car out there with him. You're loading in the one with him. 13 cars, pretty much in the lead pack. Every time I'd get around him, here's what I'd hear. <laughs> Three drivers back outside the lead pack and two in the garage, Mayfield and Musgrave. That's the first thing I'd hear. Then the next thing I'd hear wasn't a very good sound. <laughs> Mike 
Mike Dale Earnhardt came on his radio and told his spotter, Danny Culler, go over to Gordon's spotter and tell him that we need to work together to fall in line because we are both on older tires or else we are going to lose this pack. There are the spotters high above the Winston Tower, two floors above us, and way above the racetrack. They need to be eagle-eyed because at times those cars are a mile away from their vantage point. Well, what everybody's doing right now is get, they're preparing themselves for the final five laps. The spotters are cleaning their glasses and their binoculars and they're sipping on their drink up there and they're getting ready because they know that this thing is going to pick up the action with five to go. Look at Gordon on the inside. Evidently, Danny Culler delivered Look that. that roof Earnhardt there, I think he had his arm out the window. No, it was waving, was it? Or was it just a... It that was, a, no, it that was a roof flap on the 18 car was flapping up and down. Oh, gosh. And what's been causing that, Daryl, is that, that roof fin across the front, it's disturbing the air across the roof. It's making the air mad. It's not knowing what to do, and it'll raise that roof flap up. Yep. We've seen that in a number of incidences when the cars are in groups. And look what happened to our leader, Tony Stewart. He got drop kicked. Well, I know what he'll be saying. These tires ain't very good. Got a bad set of tires. On the other hand, he might think a little strategy might be going on there with Tony. He might think getting in a, getting back and getting a run on him might be a better situation for him. He went from first to sixth, leaving Bobby Labonte at the lead. Mark Martin in second, Earnhardt Jr., Earnhardt Sr. Here comes Mark Martin with Dale Jr. in tow, going into turn three. They're going to take the lead. Dale Sr. moving up the middle with help from Dale Jarrett. Boy, Labonte and... Uh, Boy, the Daytona 500 is anything like this. I can't wait till next Sunday. Labonte and Stewart, I, they went from leading to fighting for the lead. And here comes Junior with a look to the outside. I got to say, these cars have got a lot of grip. And some of them just to have those old tires. On. I told you, DW, trust me, those two tires would be just fine. <laughs> Now, did Earnhardt Jr. move up to the outside to pick up his dad in the draft, or did he just move to go? Yeah, I'm pretty sure <laughs> that's what he did. One of those. Yeah. I'm well, thinking he wants his dad to get behind him. I tell you, when he gets in front, he could be, uh, he could be somebody to deal with. A little bump wrapping there at the end of the back straightaway between the Earnhardt. The reason they hit at the back back there, the, at the end of the straightaway, the plate and the drag these cars have, the front car slows way down at the end of the straightaway. That gives the guy behind him a little run on him, but when he hits him in the rear end, it shoots that lead car forward just like he hit the afterburner. So that second car, since it doesn't have to push the wind, it can push the front oh, car. Oh, he, he gets a heck of a toe, and the guy in the front is slowing down. and gives him a boot and spe speeds him back up. Here comes the teammates, Joe Gibbs. And look at Dale Jarrett get a run, sucking up on the Tony Stewart at the orange car. I believe that the 20 and the uh, 18, I believe they said, look, let's see, be sure we can handle these guys. Let's get back there and pass them. They're going to catch up Terry Labonte here in a second. The low lap down. 18 car went way high there. Not a good move. And look at Earnhardt Sr., the three, shuffled to the back of that pack once again. That's all about, he can't, I think he's probably having trouble holding it wide open every lap. A little arrow push and somebody getting the wrong place, and he's got to let out the throttle. And you see Terry Labonte there, he's a lap car, but did you see Tony Stewart down? He's hunting any little draft he can get, even though Terry's running What happened then was the 18 and the 20, they got shoved out of line just a little bit, but I think you can see how quickly they came back to the front. Look, at here comes Bobby Labonte, Tony Stewart. Oh, a little bit of bump in there. Dale Jarrett decided he needed oh. to get back up on the racetrack. He was running out of racetrack. That funnel was getting smaller. And, and, that, and Dale Jarrett is a nice man, but I wouldn't do that to him. <laughs> Dale really don't have no no help down there on the bottom of the racetrack. No, he. Anytime you get cut off going into three like that, you've got to lift a little bit. You lose your momentum, and you're going to get passed by a lot of cars. You'll nope. have to. Now he's got to go to the back and work his way back up there again. Mike, I asked Kevin Hamlin, the crew chief on the three car, if you had to do all over again, seeing now what you know with the 20 car, how strong it is on four tires, would you have gone with four tires? No, I, I think we go with two, because this thing's not over yet. Here comes Junior for the lead by his lonesome on the bottom. 
That was strong. That was strong. Here comes Stewart right back after him. That's horsepower down the back. That's Whoa! Where Tony gets loose there off turn That's four. That's handling off of turn four. That's a handful off of turn four. That might have even scared Junior. I don't know. <laughs> scared me. I'm way up here. Oh, June bug. He, he got to look at the back of that Pontiac. Here. Watch this. Coming off of turn four, he's got that thing cranked down under him, and he says, hello. Oh, yeah. Junior never even clinched. He didn't even look over. He didn't even know it was there. Nah, he didn't. It bothered him a bit. That's Jeff Gordon way on the inside with that pack of cars. Rusty Wallace breaks out of the front pack, goes to the bottom. They're all chasing Tony Stewart, who won six races last season to lead the lead. Dick Bergman? We're listening to Dale Earnhardt, the elder, and he just told his crew he has to run up high. He said, I can't run anywhere else, Mike. Well, that's not good news if you want to win this race, unless you have a lot well, of help up there. It, it is and it isn't. I mean, at least he can run somewhere. A lot of right. times the cars get so ill, you can't run them anywhere. So he's found, that's a good thing about an Earnhardt or a Gordon or a Jarrett, those guys, they'll find a place to make their car work. See, now he has Rusty Wallace with him in the two. Up on the high side, there are just 10 laps to go. It's kind of a shame. I'd like to see this go on yeah. all afternoon. And where did Rusty Wallace come from? Way I don't back. think we've mentioned Rusty Wallace all day. Where did this whole pack come from? It wasn't long ago. We had about five or six cars. Now we got 13 back up there in the lead draft. And two young guns on the point, Tony Stewart and Dale Earnhardt Jr. I believe that Junior's car is a little faster than uh, Tony's car, but Tony's car has got those four tires. Gives him a little bit more grip through the turns. Now, the crew chief's talking to their drivers. What kind of input feedback is going on right now? Right now, the crew chief isn't saying a word. The crew chief nothing. can't do nothing. It's, it's, it's driver keeping his mouth closed, crew chief, uh, right. crew chief keeping his mouth closed, spotter doing the work right now. The only guys that are saying anything are the ones at the back, and they're giving out a whole bunch of excuses why they ain't up no closer to the front. There's nothing that crew chief can do now. They can talk about what they should have done after this race, but pretty much for the next nine laps, they've got what they got. Jarrett's on the inside trying to make a move. No one goes with him, and he makes a move, but it's back one spot. Yeah, well, he had a car. You know, he run up to the front there a while ago. He's trying to work his way back. I don't know what he's doing. He'll need some help to do it. Can't get anybody down there with him. That's his teammate in the black car there on the outside, Ricky Rudd. Man, you look over, you know it's your teammate, and you say, hey, bud, how's the left? He can do it right now, Bart. I got to go. Get you later. Him. Yeah. He's going to go back to about ninth position. And here he comes through turn two, trying to pick up, picks up a spot, and goes back a spot. As you can see, they keep the, the cars that got two tires are running higher and higher and higher. The bad news is, boys, they're going to run out of racetrack here in a little bit. Jarrett back to 10. Tries to slip up in line, but can't do it in front of Trader, so he'll go back to 11. Ricky Rudd now makes the run. I was going to say, didn't somebody pick Ricky Rudd to win this thing? I believe that was our partner Jeff down there. Ah, uh, he's been in the pit. Oh, he's been in the garage. he got some inside information. But nobody seems to be able to go alone. Rudd gets back in line just as Gordon breaks out on the bottom. He gets such a run right at the end of these straightaways, right at the end of going into turn one and right at the end of the back. And if you got room to go, and Gordon just climbed the hill and almost got to the turn two wall. From Mark Martin. That's Schrader slipping past. Now as long as these two, Stewart and Earnhardt Jr. stay single file, can anyone do anything with them? The only place is going to be at the end of the straightaway. A look at Jeff Gordon as he climbed the hill. Well, he did that on purpose. He wanted to get up and pick those lead, that, those cars in front of him, wanted to get that draft coming off turn two. I know it looked ugly, but that's what he was trying to do. Six laps to go. Now it's Labonte getting shuffled. Bobby Labonte. Bobby has got to be a little frustrated because he was up there right behind his teammate. He's got four tires. That old car, that car that he didn't like, he's going to like it a whole lot less when this is over with. Well, when you come to Daytona as the Winston Cup champion, do you find everybody gunning for you? Most of the time you do, but, you know, the LaFonte brothers, Bobby and Terry both, they're such low-key, nice guys. They, they, they're non-assuming. 
they just kind of walked in the garage and everybody kind of loved them and I think everybody's kind of happy to see him be the champ and I don't know if they're all gunning for him. Strader just went three wide between the Labonte brothers, or rather between Bobby Labonte and Jeff Gordon, to move up to six. Strader started on pole. Well, I know that Dale Sr. is sitting behind Junior and saying, when he goes, if he'll make a move on Tony Stewart, I might have a chance. We talked about Bobby Labonte, but look at him on the bottom of the racetrack there, right there challenging for the fifth position. He's got a little bit of help behind him. What happens in the race, particularly this far into the race, you get such a big push off the of turn two over there that if he can continue to run the bottom and hold it wide open off of there, he'll be able to come forward. Handful of laps left. Tony Stewart has had it pretty much his own way, but watch Schrader. Schrader keeps coming in that yellow car, one at a time, a lap at a time. If he can get a little help from Bobby Labonte, he may move up here past Rusty Wallace. He's doing a good job down on the inside, and here comes Labonte with him. I tell you, this is a, this is a chess match, isn't it? I, I, wouldn't know, I wouldn't know who to pick right now. Schrader started first. Back as far as 17, all the way back up to six. It's an up and down day. The trend is up. You know, you'd have thought he was doomed having to yep. get early. And uh, oh, whoa, that's more than buck drafting. That's get out of my way. Oh uh, man, that, that will absolutely put your heart in your throat. Dale Jr. moved low. Tony moved low with him. Then Dale tried to yank it back. Got just a little bit loose right there going into turn three. Dale's car is so. It's really fast down the back straightaway. He can really get a run on Tony, and Tony's going to have to be on his toes, or he's going to shake him out. He's going to pass him going into turn three, and now I'm telling you then, the race is on. Trader falling out of line. Motor trouble. Three laps to go. He is Trader out of gas? He could. That's exactly what it is. That's exactly oh. what it is. Remember, he stopped at lap 17. Yeah. Matt? The bad news, Ken Trader is out of gas. Oh. Hit it early because of the black flag for the oil leak and tried to stretch it. Here comes Earnhardt to the bottom on Tony Stewart. What is this all about? You can see the air. You can also smell the money. It's two laps away. I think it's that open face helmet. I think it's something about that helmet that lets you feel. You don't see anything. I think he feels something. No one has more won, won more races at Daytona International Speedway than Dale Earnhardt. Let me tell you something. That wasn't all that bad a move. We'll have to see how it plays out. But uh, I think Tony Stewart was feeling like he might not be in a good position leading this thing on the last lap. Darrell, they are running that high side that racetrack. Yeah, don't, count, don't count out Rusty Wallace. He's kind of snuck his way back up to the front pack there. The 98 winner of the shootout. I think Tony Stewart thought he thought better out and see what he could do with it. Found out. Stewart, no help. And he goes by Earnhardt on the bottom side going into turn three and four. I'm not too sure they didn't touch because uh, Earnhardt really took off up the hill. White flag. A Pontiac has never won this race. Stewart leads the bell lap in a Pontiac. Here comes Earnhardt, Wallace, Jeff Burton, and Gordon to the inside. Let me tell you what, Tony Stewart is doing some good mirror driving right now. Look at the run. Dale Jarrett gets there behind Jeff Gordon on the bottom side of the racetrack. Boys, the race is just getting ready to start. Hang on. Hang on to your helmet. Where do you swerve? <laughs> well, nowhere yet. All right, now go. Now go. Now go. This is it. He Down to turn three. Final time. If he doesn't get in here, he doesn't get in. Three wide going into turn three. Dale Jarrett pulling Bobby Labonte along with him. He's up to four. But it's not for the big money. Tony Stewart. The Rushville, Indiana Rocket leads him off the corner. Earnhardt may have one last chance. It's over. Tony Stewart wins the Budweiser shootout over Dale Earnhardt and Rusty Wallace. That was a fun race to watch. How many lead changes do you suppose we had? I won't talk about it from the start finish line, but on the entire race. <laughs> to show the effectiveness of NASCAR's new aerodynamic package. In last year's Daytona 500, which was a bit of a snoozer, Dale Jarrett dominated, only nine lead changes. Here we ran just 70 miles and had 19 lead changes. <laughs> and that was at the line. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Stewart wins the shootout in his second appearance. He's the 14th different driver to win it. There's Kensington, Connecticut's Greg Zipidelli, the 
crew chief. And it's the first win for a Pontiac in this race, Steve Burns. And Greg Zipadelli, the crew chief, congratulations. That was nerves of steel on the driver and the team, man. Uh, this, uh, Home Depot Pontiac uh, ran great all day. Tony, he's uh, he's just done a great job. We've uh, we've been learning these restrictor plate races. I think we've had really good cars. I haven't been making some of the best calls, and Tony, we're kind of learning. Uh, he did a great job today. He did what he had to do. Uh, all the guys on the crew worked real hard all winter. Uh, tweaking on these cars, and uh, we got a good one. I think our 500 car is a lot better than this one, so we're pretty excited. Congratulations. Thanks. Open wheeler, Indy car racer, Silver Crown Sprint cars, midgets, Winston Cup cars, doesn't matter. If it's got an engine, put Tony Stewart in it. He'll find a way to win. You're watching NASCAR on Fox. The Budweiser shootout has been won by Tony Stewart. Pontiac Grand Prix congratulates Tony and his wide track attack team on yet another victory. Wider is better. There's the pass for the win with two to go on Dale Earnhardt. It really was, and uh, Dale looked like he took off up the hill there just a little bit, but maybe he did on purpose to try to get a run on Tony as they come off turn four. But I got to tell you, boys, I am worn out. <laughs> I, got, I got blisters on my hands. How about this fellow? Fresh from 70 laps work, Tony Stewart wins in his second Budweiser shootout appearance. Dick Bergeron. Well, congratulations, Tony Stewart. Tell us, was it driver, car, crew, strategy? What won this thing for you today? <laughs> Playing the restrictor plate game. I hate this stuff, but uh, it worked for us. <laughs> With his crew chief, Greg Zipidelli, congratulating him. What are you learning? You said you got, as soon as you got into victory lane, you said, I'm finally learning this game. What did you learn that helped you today? I'll tell you what, uh, you know, when you got Dale Earnhardt behind you, he's going to pull every trick out he can to win here. And he's won so much here that you got to pay attention to what he's doing. And, and, you know, I'll tell you what, I can't thank Dale Earnhardt Jr. enough. I mean, him and I worked together all day long. And whether he was leading and I was behind him or vice versa, we, uh, we really worked well to get today. And uh, that's something I'm going to be looking forward to uh, next Sunday, him and I working together again. Because we, we really ran well. We ran up front all day. And we were able to really get some runs on some guys. So, uh, you know, I don't know if his old man's going to be very happy with him, but him and I had a good day nonetheless. All right, congratulations. Matt's with Earnhardt. Well, Dale Earnhardt made a great drive, nearly pulled off your seventh Bud shootout victory. The four tires versus two, was that the difference? Well, I reckon. I don't know what they did, but uh, my car was awful loose, awful pushy. Uh, I could tell they had better rubber on it, but I just kept driving the car, flying the car, doing the best I could on the top. and. Rusty and the guys worked real well with us. I just knew I, did, I needed that top lane. I couldn't get on the bottom. I'd shove off the turn two with the wind and everything so we just kept working and i tried him one uh, you know one to go and got got the lead and maybe maybe it's too soon well he finishes second i'm told down here speculation is the 20 the three the two and the nine will be headed for a trip to the wind tunnel later tonight now to steve well matt we're with the driver of that number two car rusty wallace rusty heck of a show to man today tell us about the race that was a good car all day long early in the race the windshield got coated with oil and I couldn't see anything and I had to back up by 15 lengths. We came in, they pulled the tear off off the window and then the hot rod took back off and it ran strong all day long. I ran pretty warm in the water. We'll have to work on that. The front end was pushing a little too much down in turn two, but uh, I worked good on the top side of the track and the car ran great. So going into turn three, one lap to go, Dale went low. I started to go high and I thought I was going to get him there and maybe pull off a victory when Stewart was doing what he was doing. But I'll tell you what, all in all, coming from tail back to the third. I thought it was a good run for the middle light forward today. It was a real good car today for me. Great run, Rusty. Thanks, Let's sir. go to Jeannie. Dale Earnhardt Jr., not that you can get an assist in this sport, but Tony Stewart just mentioned you and wanted to thank you for your help out there today. Yeah, um, Tony's one of the guys that'll work with me uh, with the limited experience I got. I don't got a lot of guys that respect me out there, so that comes with time, and me and Tony have been buddies for a long time. He's raced with me in the Bush Series, so, uh, I, you know, I help him out on the draft, and he helps me some. What you say to your dad at breakfast today to, to make you get out there and swap so much paint and, and it looked like there was some help and then maybe you were hung out to dry a little bit yeah we worked together the first half of the race i think uh um we really haven't ever sat down and talked about it you know so i really don't know what he wants me to do when i'm behind him or whatever but i did what i thought he wanted and uh got him in the lead a couple times he helped me out a few times but uh, when it comes down to the last 10 laps or so uh, ain't nobody gonna be helping you so uh tony's just a lucky guy to be up front Run. I mean, I would never thought he'd have won the race, but he was the lucky guy that wasn't having to race everybody back here. Well, we should be honest here. Your dream was that you won the Daytona 500 Michael Buck shootout, so your dream is still alive, yes? It's looking pretty good, I think. Uh, we didn't win today, but ain't nothing cold Budweiser ain't going to fix. All the sponsors love you. <laughs> Guys? 
Yes, they do. There is a very soggy but very happy Tony Stewart after a great win here in the Budweiser shootout and only his second appearance in this race of pole winner. He led 36 of the 70 laps. Dale Earnhardt trying for his 35th Daytona win, finished second. Rusty Wallace climbed the ladder all the way to third from tailback, as he said. Dale Jarrett fourth, Jeff Burton finishes in fifth. Earnhardt Jr., a sixth place finish. Bobby Labonte's car faded a bit to seventh. Mark Martin got close. And here's a look back through the field with 16 of the 18 starters running. Tony Stewart wins the Budweiser shootout. And we'll have lots more from Daytona International Speedway. You are watching Speed Weeks on Fox. The Budweiser Shootout on Fox is brought to you by Budweiser. With the crisp, clean, refreshing taste you'll find in no other beer. This Bud's for you. We want to thank the Budweiser.com airship for their aerial views, reminding you, as Dale Earnhardt Jr. did, that Budweiser is the official beer of NASCAR. All right, were you paying attention? On our Pet Boys tribute today, how many times has Dale Earnhardt won the Bud Shootout? And for bonus points, in those years, how many of those years did he go on to win the Winston Cup? Uh, I know the answer to the first part. Maybe I ought to know the answer to the second part. We'll check on that in a little while. Dick Bergeron? Well, right now, Joe Gibbs is on stage, and he's in the process of having his picture taken. We're going to jump right in here. Joe, how good is this guy? Well, we sure think he's great. <laughs> I think that's the best way to put it for us. We're excited when we go to work. Uh, when we got drivers like Bobby and Tony, uh, we go to work excited because we know if we can get them the right car, we got a chance to win the race. And uh, we're proud of both of our guys. Tony today drove a great race. And uh, it was great to see him get his first win here. You've seen a lot of terrific athletes in your time. How does this guy rate in comparison to the others? Well, I think he feels like he belongs. You know, uh, some athletes, you know, feel like, hey, they just want to make the team. And then other, I think other athletes want to be great. I think Tony's one of those guys who would like to be great. And uh, so we just hope we can do our part. Zippy so. did a great job. The whole team is a great team effort. And uh, Lord bless us with a great day. And we're just thrilled. Congratulations, Joe Gibbs. Thank Winning you. car owner. Tony Stewart and Greg Zipidelli celebrate there. Here's the answer to our Pep Boys trivia. Earnhardt has won the Budweiser shootout more times than any other driver. Six times. He's never run second until today. And in four of those six years, he went on to win the Winston Cup. But today, it is Tony Stewart who banks $200,000. And now he gets a little bit of that sponsor's product. All over, not in him. We will be right back. Next weekend, there's lots more racing on Fox. Next Saturday, the Napa 300 for the NASCAR Bush Series, and then Rush Hour, NASCAR Happy Hour for the Cup Cars, 3.30 Eastern Time on FX. And next Sunday, the Daytona 500 airs right here on Fox Sports. Coverage begins 11.30 a.m. Eastern Time, 8.30 Pacific, one week from today. Well, uh, don't bother calling your accident reconstruction team because they're already destroying the evidence, getting things ready in a fresh concrete wall for practice tomorrow. Matt Yoakum. And Dale Jarrett came home fourth. DJ, one year ago you won the 500. What do you expect to see now after running the Bud Shootout this afternoon for next week's race? Well, it looked pretty exciting there, and that was only 70 laps, so I think it's going to be an exciting race. Uh, you know, you can make some passes, but uh, as I've been standing here telling everybody else, we'd like to, to know that the Ford was on equal ground, and, and we're not. We know that we're at about a 10-horsepower drag uh, disadvantage here, and uh, NASCAR knows it, and, and we'd like to see something to, to know that we've got a chance. It would take just absolutely perfect scenario next Sunday on the last lap because the Ford can't get out front and stay for very long. So, uh, you know, the bitching and complaining starting, and, uh, you know, we're going to be there. Hopefully something will be done, but... You know, we've got a great race car. Uh, it was a nice day uh, to get UPS started off in a pretty decent manner. We had a good run, uh, did a lot of passing, uh, just didn't get to the right place at the end. Well, the good news for you, DJ, they are taking four cars to the wind tunnel, a Pontiac, a Dodge, a GM, and a Blue Badge mount. So let's go to Steve. All right, thank, thanks, Matt. Jeff Burton, fifth place finish, but kind of a frustrating day at the office. Tell us why. Well, it was. Uh, for whatever reason, when they, when they did this aero package and we saw it at Talladega, it really hurt the Fords.